Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I've got a bit of a treat for you. We've got a laptop and it looks like a real nice one. So it is a Sony Vio, a very fancy looking laptop. I don't know anything about this one because there's no model number on it anywhere. But to me, it looks like a quality piece. It uh, says in here, Intel Core i5. I've got a feeling that this probably was quite expensive when it was new, but it does say Windows 8 at the back here, so I don't think it is very new. But I reckon in its day, it was, uh, it was a pricey laptop. So how and why did I get this one here? Well, this isn't, I didn't buy this off eBay or anything. This is from Richard. So you might remember Richard from the PC build that we did with his son. And also last time you seen him, he was balancing <laughs> on the top of his roof, trying to get that ubiquity dish to point over to my brother's house. So he was contacted by the original owner asking if Richard could get the data back from it, the pictures and stuff. And if he could, then he's more than welcome to keep the laptop. So he's had this for a while now. He's taken it apart. He can't see anything obviously wrong with it. He thinks maybe the battery is faulty, but he didn't want to really go and buy a, a new battery for however much they cost, 30, 40, 50 pounds if it meant there was another fault because you're just kind of throwing money at it. Also, he bought a little connector because he thought that the connector was a little bit iffy from where you plug in the charger going into it. But then the one that arrived looks slightly different than the one that's in there. So he asked me if I wanted to take a look at it. So I thought I would, you never know, it could be an interesting video. So let me show you what it's doing. And then after that, we'll get it over to the blue mat, take the back cover off, which is already loose, and then we'll have a good look on the inside, see if we can spot anything. Let me just plug it in and show you that. So the good thing about this is, if it hasn't been looked at by a professional, then I have much more chance of uh, getting my head around it. Right, so that, okay, that does feel pretty loose, but we can open it up and see if we get getting voltage inside. Yeah, there we go. So we have got an orange light. Now, apparently when you press on, the orange light just cuts out. Okay, well, I've got a green light. I can hear the fan spinning up. Note the fan stopped. Green light's gone out. Do you know what would be nice? I've watched a few videos. Oh, it's back on again. I've watched a few videos and on loads of YouTube videos, it's the MOSFETs that are shorted and I'd love to have that fault. Right, let's try and hold down the power button for five to ten seconds. Right, that must be about ten seconds now. Orange light again. He's taken the uh, hard drive out of it, so even if I even if I can get it fixed, it will only go to the post. You know, like the BIOS screen or whatever. Yeah, you can see there it's not turning on, but it's trying to, which is good. Okay, let's get it over to the blue mat. The back cover is already loose on it, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what's going on. Okay, so let's pop the back cover off. And also, I think this is called uh, I say Z in the UK, but it does actually sound better in this instance, a Z flip. So uh, if you open it up here, it kind of turns into a tablet. So this must be touch screen as well. We have a little release here, which then releases this, and it allows you to have it like so, so you can look at it from that angle, or put it down here and then use it as a tablet. And I think these came with with a pen as well. But anyway, let's put it back the other way so we don't break it. There we go. Right, let's get this back cover off. So video today is sponsored by the MyMateVents Massive. And this month, can't believe the amount of members we've got at the moment, it's unbelievable. So we've got Saturnine Cinema, Robert Hughes, Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Jaw Media, Mr. Directory, and now another new member as well, Will Michaelis. So you might recognize that name, Will, and he was the one that sent me the brick switch from America. Do you remember that video that I did ages ago with the Hershey bars and stuff like that? So yeah, that's just amazing. We've got like nine members at the moment, which is fantastic. I'll get this cover off. Here we go. There 
There we go, okay, and the batteries come away with it as well. So what we've got here, lithium, 15 volt lithium. We can check that out later. I'll tell you what we'll do, let's, uh, let's plug it in without the battery and let's see if it turns on, just in case the battery's putting a fault on it. Right, green light on. Green light still on. Green light off. And nothing on the screen. And the fan's gone down again. Right, okay, so it's uh, it's not that. Let's just pop the battery back in and let's see if the battery's getting any voltage. So we're on DC. There's a, a negative and plus here. There we go, 14 volts. And rising, look, that's charging as we speak. So yeah, the, the battery is depleted right now because it's a 15 volt battery, lithium, so fully charged. I don't know what that's gonna be, 16 point something. But yeah, that is charging, that's taking a charge. I'm sure Richard said he left it plugged in for an over an hour though and it still didn't work. That's really uh, taking a charge, isn't it? Look at that. Okay, well that's good. Right, let's uh, let's see if we've got voltage. So we, we must have voltage here then. So this mustn't be 40. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let's uh, unplug this. Let's unplug this. Let's see if we do have a short on the uh, incoming. The incoming. So let's go to continuity there. I don't know how far I have to push this in here. Let's just see if that's gonna give us a reading. Let's put it on to uh, the beep test at the moment. So we've got red and black on this cable here. This goes round to here. Okay, so we've definitely got a connection there between there and there. So now if I was to go between here and here, that will show me whether we have a, a short or not. So let's see what it's reading. Yes, yeah, so there's no short there, is there? Okay, that's a little bit of a shame. Because uh, I was hoping hoping to get something maybe with a short that I could actually fix. Okay, so uh, let's plug that in here. Go to DC. Let's get a ground from here. And let's see if we've got, what is this charger? 19 volts? 19.5 volts. And this is a Sony one as well, so it looks like a proper charger. Yeah, 19.5 volts, 19.5 volts on that one, and these two should be uh, the ground. Ah, hold on now, wait a minute. That's 19. 19.5 there, but when we go between here and here, oh, I was reading 10 volts a second ago. Maybe I wasn't on it right. Right, 19.5. So, uh, what do we have to do? We have to follow that 19 volts, don't we? Or could it be the BIOS battery? Let's, uh, let's unplug the BIOS battery. like so, and I think you're supposed to, let's unplug that, and I think you're supposed to short out the pins. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Right, let's, uh, actually, let's check that battery, see if we've got anything on the battery. Three point three volts. Well, so it's all looking normal at this moment in time. But if the battery was flat, it would still work with the power from the charger, wouldn't it? So it can't be, it can't be that. It can't be just that the battery's flat. Also, I'm sure Richard plugged it in for ages. Right, Richard thought that this was loose here. That's the reason he bought another one. 
but when he handed it over, I think he said it's the wrong size. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's too big for that connector there. I'm just going to give it a wiggle. I know it's reading 19 volts, but I'm just going to give it a, a, a give this a wiggle and see if it's still reading 19 volts. Right, so we've got 19 there. Yeah, that connector's fine. No, so that doesn't need to be changed. Uh, let's turn it on. We've done the BIOS battery. Let's turn it on now. Green light. Still the green light, but then it goes out. Hmm. Right now. So it's like it's kind of power cycling coming on and off. So it's trying. It's trying. Let's see so where where would these two MOSFETs be normally when you have the input you have two MOSFETs would it be these two here let's zoom right in on this section right it's one of those boards where it's a bit awkward to see where the traces go I can see that this trace is linked to where is it this trace goes to I can't really see maybe these these three bits of the MOSFET, this might be the gate, this side here. So maybe would these be the two incoming MOSFETs from here? I can't see where, where it goes to from here. Does this go to this diode? Let's, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to unplug the power connector just for the moment and just go to continuity, see if I can work out where, the, uh, where they're going to. So this is the positive. Okay, that definitely goes to there. Okay, so that's showing a short to ground. Would that be normal on a diode? Uh, so from here, that's feeding this side of the MOSFET. And then would this be the output here? Where does this go to? Is this working? Yeah. Right, let's plug it back in and measure voltages. So this side of that diode, 19 volts. So this side should be nothing. Then this side of the MOSFET, I've got to be careful now that I don't go on the wrong pins. Right, 19 volts. Nineteen volts there. Let's see what we got on this big coil. Hmm. Nothing. Let's try this uh, MOSFET here. Nothing. Was this the gate, the top one? Nothing. Oh, nineteen volts that side. Uh, does that mean that this one, could this one here be shorted if we've got something on this side, but not this side? Nineteen volts of that capacitor. Okay, let's unplug here. Let's see if we have a short between here and here. 110 ohms, hmm, 110 ohms, not sure. Okay, uh, maybe something, maybe the screen or something is stopping it from coming on. So let's unplug a few bits here. Turn it on. Right, 
no and off again so the screen's not making any difference ram what ram is this this is eight gigabytes and this is pc 3l and i know this one because on my wife's laptop it had this and it only had four gigabytes so i i upgraded it so this is ddr3l i think it's the next one on from ddr3 and now the more modern laptops have ddr4 uh, i'm not sure if there's ddr5 i don't know right okay uh Let's see if it's going to do anything. Well, mind you, would it turn on without RAM? Let's see. It's still on? No, and it's gone off. Oh, hold on. Ah. We've got something on this RAM here. Let's zoom in. We have something here. We've got burn, I don't know what that is, glue or burn marks or something. Let's zoom right in on that. Is that some sort of weird liquid damage? Let's get some uh, isopropyl alcohol and clean that up and see whether, see if it comes off. So this is just 99.9% .9 alcohol. Something's definitely happened here. It's not coming off though. That was weird, that wasn't really like water corrosion, it looked more like some sort of glue. Oh, look at that massive, <laughs> look at that a massive lump of dust. Let's just see if we've got continuity. So when my leads go together, they beep. Let's just have a look now. So it was around this kind of area here. So let's start from here. Yes. Does that go to there? Hmm. That looks like it should go there, maybe. Maybe, I'm excited now, maybe this is our problem. We have a trace which is not going to where it should be going. This one, this one here. Look, that's not getting there, is it? Results, right, let's just check these. Love fault finding. It goes that via there. That has to be going there, and it's not. I wonder if there's a slight break in it just here. Hmm. Right, I am going to think. Let me just get a, a, I think I'm just gonna get a little knife on this, just to give it a little scrape there, because it's so small.
Oh, I can't see where that's gone. Let's use our meter. It's just, it must be just as it meets here. It is, it's just there. That's it. Whoa. Tiny. I think a tiny dot of solder will actually just jump that up. Well, that is so small, I can't even see it when I'm zoomed all the way in. Oh, now I can. There you go, that's it there. I mean, I'm zoomed right the way in now. But look, that tiny, tiny little break there. So, I'm just gonna see what it looks like when it's back into the computer to see if I can definitely have access to putting a lump of solder on that. Imagine if that tiny, tiny, tiny little trace was enough to stop this from working. I mean, it, obviously it's easy just to change out the RAM, but you do know I do try to like to fix things rather than just replace. Yeah, look, I will be able to get to that area there. It doesn't, it doesn't get covered up, so a tiny bit of solder there will be okay. Right, let me get my solder line set up and we'll put a dot of solder on there. I mean, this might not be the problem, but uh, it's the only thing we've found so far. Right, I've got a nice clean tip. Let's see now. I'm going to try to do this with uh, out a bit of flux just to start with. And actually, I keep making this mistake, and Gadget UK keeps telling me to uh, to do it. This time, I am going to do it. He's not the only one. Other people have told me this. I'm going to put Captain tape over these pins because I actually don't want it on the pins itself, do I? I only want it on that very very top bit. There we go. Now I wonder, would that be enough? No, I can still see the break there. I might have to actually run a little wire. That might be it. Okay, let's give it a clean. Oh, I think I've bridged, I think I've bridged it to the next one. I think it's bridged to the next one. But I do think that one is connected, so if I just tap it, I might get away with it. Yeah, I've bridged that. Right, let's uh, just try to tap this one here. I'm gonna hold the board at an angle to make it easier for myself. There. Excellent. Not there, and now... Here, we've got it. And that's the one next to it. Perfect. I just want to double check where I went through the wire that I haven't messed it up. Yeah, it's there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is put a little bit of solder mask on that and then hopefully that will remain intact.
There we go. I'm going to put a bit of uh, UV light on that to set it. So I've got a little torch down here. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that now for a few five, five, ten minutes or so for that to go hard. And then we'll pop it back in the laptop. We'll see if it's behaving any differently. Right, I'm still waiting for that to go off. But what I'm thinking is, if there was damage on that, probably, or there could be damage on the board as well. So let's move this over out of the way. And I think what I'm going to do is, let me just see where that actually went into the board. So that went in like that. So the damage is over here near this little QR code. So let's zoom right in and see if we can see anything in there. Yeah, it doesn't look good around that area, does it? So if you have a look around here, all this side looks okay, but look at this little patch here where the brush is now. Looks a bit iffy. So I'm going to get the IPA and I'm going to, with the brush, flush it around in there. Hopefully that might clean it out a little bit. Well, let's see if that looks any better. Well, I think it does. In fact, amazingly, it looks perfect. Which is good because that connector would be a nightmare to change. Right, let's uh, see if the mus, uh, UV mask has gone off now. Yeah, that's gone nice and hard now. One more check for continuity. I think that's okay. So let's pop that back in. Yeah, that's cleared that bit there. Oh, I'm hopeful now. Let's zoom out a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. That's plugged in. Oh, screen. Right, come on now, do something different. It flashed on, it flashed on for a second. It's lit up, yes, brilliant, dodgy RAM. There it is and it says what it is, model number SVF14N284E. Brilliant, what a result. Unbelievable. So how good is that? Just a tiny little break stops the whole thing from working. Just one tiny little trace. And the original owner had this laptop fail on them. So I'm not actually gonna take this any further now because Richard needs to put the hard drive back in it and there's no point in me putting the screws back in So because he needs to put the hard drive in. So all I'm gonna do is put a couple of screws to hold the battery in and also the fan is kicking up quite a bit. So I do go on to change the thermal paste. There's no real point in me showing you that. All I do is undo three screws off the heat sink, take it off, wipe away the old thermal paste with some isopropyl alcohol and put new thermal paste on. So I'll just quickly show you that in fast forwarded mode just while I'm speaking now. And then what I do is put a couple of screws to hold a battery in, put the case back on, just put one screw in the case just to stop it all falling apart. And then I leave it plugged in for a good 45 minutes or so to get some charge back into it. And now this is it working at the very end.
So it's been about 45 minutes or so later and it's now unplugged and working purely on battery power alone. Touchpad's working, uh, keyboard's working and also the uh, touchscreen's working as well. And as well as that, there's no flicker or anything when you turn this around the place. So that's all working well. Start via care. The model number's down here. I've just got a bit of tape over the service tag and stuff. I don't know whether that's relevant or not. I don't think it matters anymore because the warranty's gone, but it saves me blurring it out. This one here appears to be from about 2013, 2014. I think it cost around about £800 when it was new. A lot of that's just going to be spent on the aluminium casing, the fact that you can flip here, uh, flip the screen and stuff like that. I think this laptop's made to look nice rather than maybe perform really, really well. So big thanks to Richard for allowing me to work on it. I think he's going to be well happy now that it's working. And as well as that, no money was spent. So yes, he could have swapped the RAM out himself. He might not have had a spare stick but at least I fixed the RAM it wasn't just a case of swapping it out I love faults where you actually fix something rather than just replace even though replacing is still fixing it's nice to actually fix the thing that's faulty and what a nice little repair that was there and the RAM is definitely recognized as well system memory 8192 megabytes that's the same as 8 gigabytes and that's in the BIOS settings so this next bit you see now is the laptop fully working with Windows 10. Richard sent me this over via WhatsApp, so we install Windows 10, and it appears to be working properly. Then at the end of the video, I will say goodbye in the time that it was originally filmed. Hi Vince, just a quick message to say the laptop's all working now. I've installed a 240 gigabytes SSD drive and installed Windows 10. Everything's working, wireless network's working, all the components of the board are working, so we've got full internet access. And it's all looking good. So there you go, it's all up and running. So that is it for this video. If you're watching this on Patreon, you're probably watching it just before Christmas, so I wish you all a Merry Christmas. If you're watching it on YouTube and you're a subscriber, it might be just after Christmas. So I hope you had a nice Christmas and I wish everybody a happy new year. Thanks to all the support you've given me in 2020. So massive thanks, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Take care. Bye now.